All right, getting this video started here. I'm gonna take apart and kind of refresh this little board's Western Field 410 bolt action shock. So first thing to take off this butt plate. These Phillips head screws kind of beat up. If this is the original butt plate, you'll see that stock has swelled over the years as it's bigger than the actual butt plate, so no big deal. I've never taken this gun apart. I've never actually seen a video on how to do it, so we'll see how this goes. Let's put a little, maybe freshen up those holes a little bit there. Okay, my guess is this big flathead screw right down here is going to help us separate. Actually, first, maybe we'll take the bolt out. Usually, these just come out by pulling the trigger. I need bolt action, pull the trigger back while it's in the back position, and then this should work out. Okay, well, same back on as well. Taking this screw out here just so it's out of the way. I don't lose it later. Okay, but we're definitely going to take off this plastic non original to the gun trigger guard, that's for sure. I'll check eBay. Like I said in the short video introducing this, to see if I can find an original trigger guard that'll fit a little better. You'll see back here. This didn't go fully to the end, it was, shaved, it was shaved off and not using the original screw hole, so again, if it's something cheap, I can make this more authentic, great, if not, the same plastic, not original trigger scar will go back on the gun afterwards, so. It is plastic, not quite the right there. See in here again, they put a secondary hole right there to mount in this one, because this is shorter. So. Now it could be, this could be the original, maybe it is, and the end just broke off here. You know, the tip of it broke off, and then they just moved the screw back. So it is possible this is the original. It sort of fits, but I don't know. I'll take a look on that online. It's weird that using plastic in such an old gun here, but there's, there's the breakdown. Let's see if we can get it close to the barrel. The condition it's in. So bluing's not too bad back here in the chamber area, but as soon as you get on the barrel, there's really nothing left. That's what we're working on. So these old guns, I'll just take a peep down the barrel. Still pretty shiny. I don't see the sight sticking down inside the barrel, so that's a good step. I'll probably pull this trigger off just to get out of the way. All right, so it looks pretty simple. This looks like one, one sixteenth inch pin here. It is obviously spring loaded, so when I push this through, it may wanna send that spring across the room, so we'll be gentle. Okay, there's the pin. Another, okay, that was easy. Comes right out. Again, there's no blue whatsoever on this, so we'll re-blue re this. We'll keep this spring. Let's see the attached in there. Okay. Nope, it comes out, so don't want to lose that spring. Put that on a magnetic dish along with that. Boom. Okay. There's the three main parts besides the trigger there. All right. So probably won't start much of this tonight. We'll see how I'm feeling later on if the kids go to bed. Otherwise, I might be getting this over the next couple of days. Strip this, you blew everything. This one update that I did end up getting that front screw out. It's just a tight fit between the threads there and the wood, so it's almost like the wood has kind of gotten threaded to this, so I did unthread it very carefully and it came out. All right, so the next day, we're gonna see how this goes. I did not love the citrus strip last time. 
Um, I looked up a few different methods of getting this off. You can use 80 grit sandpaper, which you know gets the finish off, and then kind of build it from there. But I paid 20 bucks for this stupid stuff, so I'm gonna give it one more go. Uh, make sure you use online, but uh, we'll see how this one goes. This time I'm gonna leave it on for a half hour and then scrape it off. Hopefully that will make it a little more usable. Applied. We'll give it a 30 minute clock. We'll come back and try and scrape out and see if it works better than last time. Alright, it's been 30 minutes. We'll see how this comes off this time. A little less gummy, still sticky. Ugh. Stuff is just junk. I'm sorry. If you make this stuff, I heard it used to be good and they changed the formulation. Now it's just junk. It doesn't seem to even do much. I'm gonna have to take a Brillo pad or a steel wool to this afterwards with mineral spirits to try and get this junk off, and that'll actually strip some stuff. What a pain in the neck. Just doesn't come off clean or easy. strip trash this is just useless I mean I'm gonna have to take steel wool and mineral spirits to actually get this junk off fool me once shame on you citrus strip fool me twice shame on me for trying again it's definition of insanity repeating the same thing over Again, expecting different results. I thought because last time I let it sit on there longer than a half hour, probably an hour, hour and a half is what caused the issue, but no. Okay, it's an old dirty steel wool, mineral spirits. Look at this real quick. Do you want me to with my hands? It's pretty good. Okay, it's dry after being clean with the mineral spirits, but still pretty blotchy. As far as the finish didn't quite get pulled out of all these different areas, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand this down. Probably start with 100 grit. There's some definitely some dings and stuff I want to clean out. It looks pretty cool. I'm sure if I just coat it right now, it'd look pretty classic, but I think I want to get it a little cleaner and then build back up and start as far as numbers. Just like down here, this looks very blotchy, and I want to clean that up a little bit before I true oil this thing. Using 100 grit right now.
sticking to the sandpaper a little bit with this grip. Here it's just still blotchy, so of course, I gotta sand that a bunch to get that kind of a uniform color. Okay, so this is at the end of using 100 grit sandpaper. I don't want to take every single stain out as far as you know the oil. Stain inside here. I think it just kind of gives a good look when it's done with my limited experience, of course. So I think I'll just start walking up in uh, sandpaper levels, get this thing smoothed out to like 220 or so, and then we'll think about staining it or just going right to the oil. Okay, we just did 120, now we're gonna do 150. Next, maybe 320 is all I think I the next step up. Let's see if 320 can pop out those 220 scratches out of here. Okay, let's give it a look and see how it'll look when it gets. Just oil. Just water in a rag. Kind of get an idea what it would look like without any sort of stain on it. It would look like just with water or with oil. Huh. I thought I might not stain this one, but it's kind of light if I don't stain it. Got kind of an orange color to it. I don't know what kind of wood this stuff. I assumed it was walnut before, but kind of looks boring without a little bit of color. So I think I may actually put that walnut stain on here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do full concentration stain on this stock. I like the dark stock look better, so that's what we're going to do with this gun.
Hmm. I don't know if I like this. It almost seems a little darker than I wanted. Okay, so while the stock walnut stain is drying, we're gonna go ahead and prep this for bluing. Got the barrel, obviously, the bolt, at least the handle here. I'm not gonna try and blue that, I don't think. Um, and then a couple other mission latest screws and whatnot, so I wanna get these blued up and darkened. So I'll work on the barrel first, it's kind of the biggest part, most satisfaction. So anyway, I'll be doing that right now. So step one, so the cleaner degreaser. Again, wear your gloves, sort of rag. Next is the blue and rust remover. The last gun I wire wheeled the barrel to kind of get that clean, but you know it's also a little harsher than it needs to be. So I'm just gonna try using this this time and really follow the directions properly. So again, get this soaked in. It's gonna stay <clears throat> soaked in for two minutes. And then start trying to get the old bluing off with the steel wool. This stuff stinks a little bit, by the way. All right, two minutes later, take some steel wool, saturate it with the blue and rush remover, and then start wiping this stuff off. And hopefully, the old bluing and the rust will come off. Along with this, we'll see. If not, we'll go the sandpaper route or the wire wheel route to get this rust off here. <clears throat> okay. I've done the barrel many times, degreased, rust remover, multiple steps, and rinse with uh, cold water here just now. So I think we're pretty much ready to start bluing this barrel, even though I'm seeing some spots here. I may just go rinse it one more time in water. And uh, anyway, this is what it looks like. I see the light in there. Most of the bluing has been removed. It's not perfect, but it's also a $100 shotgun. So enough, enough elbow grease went to this one already. It's time for some perma glue. Again, always put it in a different container. You don't want to dip the swab back in this container because that will bring metal into there apparently and reduce the effectiveness of this particular stuff. So, cotton swab, get saturated. We should see this start to turn black before our very eyes. Hopefully, the camera's picking that up. All right, rinse this all the way back. All right, well, it's blotchy in spots, so I'm going to take our double lot steel wool, lightly polish it to try and even it out a little bit. And that scrapes off some of the darker spots as well, but we'll go over it again anyway. And don't rub too hard here. We're trying to let this set in still. If I even use that vocabulary correctly. OK, 
And because we use steel wool, <clears throat> now we must use degreaser again. I'm probably gonna grab a new pair of gloves also. I'm going through gloves like it's going out of style. All right, degrease the barrel, let that sit for a second. While we're waiting for that one, I'll do the next other, next important part I would say is the bolt handle. Let's see if this will take some bluing here. Not the bolt itself, just the handle of it. Okay, I'll do a couple of parts while I'm here. The tape down pin and bolt. Get that saturated. Other screw that goes in the bottom of the receiver. This trigger, I don't think it'll take a bluing, but whatever, I'll try. Nah, that doesn't seem to be taking it. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of, that was a stainless steel maybe. But it's definitely not bluing at all. But stock pad. Screws are also visible from the outside. I'll do a little push up on those. Rinse those off. Be back. Okay, let's do a second coup on the barrel. See if we can get this looking a little better. I think I did like, like three or four coats on the last barrel. And it started to finally turn out evenly by the end. Okay, rinse this off. All right, so <clears throat> I didn't have any of the Birchwood Casey barricade left over. So what I did is after I did the final bluing step, I just put gun oil on it, as well as some CLP. So here's the barrel, soak overnight, 24 hours or so. Let that oil kind of hold the bluing in, I think. I'm not sure how it's working chemically, but anyway, that's it for the bluing. Hopefully when I check it out tomorrow, it's nice and shiny. It's the next day, and the walnut has dried. It's hard to tell in this picture, but it looks okay. Got some darknesses from probably lack of sanding. It's a good character, I think, once we uh, put some true oil on it. So that's the steps today right now. We're gonna take true oil. And start applying it. My finger. Start at the front, and go back.
Okay. So who does not mean to take some of Jason's? That's a pretty dark stock. After one coat, let this dry for 24 hours, depending on how it's feeling. Okay, first coat is done. Go hang it up for a while. Get that dry. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to dry my gun stock out here in the sun, but I just figured some fresh air would help. Not a bad image below Old Glory right there. America. Okay, after the second coat, here's the product. Some mismatched glossiness in there. Unlock it down with double odd steel wool. And then I'll put a third coat on it. All right. Well, last sanding before the last coat. So some 400 grit sandpaper this time. I never know which grit to use. So we're gonna try this real quick. Give it a quick scuffing. See how this method turns out. I'm gonna hit this front spot again that probably can't see with this current camera angle, but I was holding it by this spot when I was doing the back, and now I'll make sure I have a good, clean, consistent coat. Well, this is post four coats, but I'm still getting some inconsistencies. I'm not sure if I'm gonna sh it's gonna show up here or not. But this area right here is a little flat. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna show up in the camera. Over here, I had a couple of light runs, so I'm gonna have to break this or knock it down with double lot steel wool again, and then one last coat. So, all right, for you it'll be a few seconds, but for me it'll be another day before I assemble this gun. All right, welcome back. So it's the uh, night. It's late here in the East Coast. It's almost 11 o'clock, but it's time to go ahead and put this gun back together. So. Try and get you close up of some of the parts before I assemble it here. The stock, eh, it's not perfect. I have a little run right there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but it's looking a whole lot better than it did, and the barrel turned out pretty good. Not perfect, but it sure looks a whole lot shiny than it did. So I'll set you up over back here. Let's see if I can remember how to put this thing back together. Let's go ahead. Bit of a bear, but I had that dial pin installed back in there. Go ahead and 
Still, this screw has to be threaded in through this first section. Kind of pretty tight threading there. And then it gets to the area where it's pretty moving down. I'll go ahead and this receiver in here. Let's dust down. Trigger sure feels pretty good. Go ahead and put the trigger guard back on. Again, I didn't, I looked for a replacement trigger guard online for this version and even for a Mossberg Model 73, which I believe is the version of this gun that was then sold to Montgomery Ward stores. And I couldn't find any for a good price. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this same trigger guard back on, even though it's not the perfect match. It'll work. Just like it has for years. I have to oil it up a little bit first. Now we have some gun oil right here. So, slides on here, and then it lines up, getting that groove lined up there. So I did clean this out before. Everything's functions. I did, again, I blued this part and I did a little bluing here but it kind of turned out not that great looking so I didn't even bother trying to blue that. Okay, with any bolt action you just say pull the trigger down and that'll slide allow the bolt to pass over it. Okay got it in there and functioning pretty well. So I a little bit pull up it. You gotta like rock it down a little bit to get smooth motion back. I don't know, it's lubricated really well, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. It does fire. Safety works, turn, pull it down, turn it over there. Pull it there, ready to shoot. Not supposed to work. Okay, the last part to install is the butt pad, which I really didn't spend any time cleaning up. So they weren't rusty. There are two different length screws here. I assume the shorter screw would go into the bottom, which is the thinner part, but we'll see when we tighten it down how they feel. I do remember those threads being a little weak on the way out. Just see if the longer screw No, the bottom's out first. Okay, I'm gonna have to put a little something in that hole to give better holding power. Alright, have a little bottle rocket stick here and put down the hole. Hopefully that's enough to get some traction for this screw. Which was more permanent fix, but for now, pretty 
pierce this will do. Ward's Western Field, model 17B. Take some pictures here. Add that to the end of the video. Barrel looks a little better than it did before, I'd say. Stock looks a whole lot better. All right, it's the next day. Eyes and ears on. This old girl will shoot as good as it looks. Fire in the hole. Well, what do you think? Before and after, I'm not a gunsmith, I'm not a professional wood restorer, but I think this is a pretty good refresh for this old gun. Oh yeah, big improvement. All right, well thanks for watching. I got a couple more old guns to refresh like this, so like and subscribe if you want to be reminded to uh, view those videos. Thanks for watching.